Hi guys, Vertus Education here with the 26th video of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner Series and in this episode I'm going to be going over sound inside of UDK. More specifically, I'm going to be introducing you to sound, I'm going to be going over the difference between sound waves and sound cues, a brief introduction to the sound cue editor, and just getting that general level of atmosphere with sound. So let's just go ahead and start off by explaining what sound is. Well, pretty much everyone knows what sound is, you hear it. For example, example, things you would hear would be like water or birds or fire, you know, that sort of thing. Like, for example, if you was to walk near this uh, water, you'd expect to hear like little splashes, trinklets of water. Or if I was to go outside, I've got some fire out there, I'd expect to hear some flames just bursting out loud and, you know, sounding all cool and just giving that level of atmosphere that we don't have. So, so far in the series, we've been placing assets, we've been adding in cool features and so on and so forth. However, it all kind of gets boring if you've got nothing to go alongside it. So, for example, when I walk around, all you hear is footsteps and that's about it. Like, for example, if I was to go over to this water here, you can't hear anything. We've got a spinning cube, you know, you can't hear anything from that. We've got some screens, you know, we've got loads of stuff, but there's just no sound to it and it just doesn't feel right and in this episode we're going to be adding in that sound so UDK has a pretty cool and robust sound system in the sense that you can play sound either um, globally or in 3D space so for example I'm gonna show you how I've set up some water here so that you can hear it and it kind of fades away as you get further and further away from it so right now you should be able to hear it pretty darn loud which is pretty cool and sounds just like water. There seems to be some sort of glitching there, I don't know. But, you know, it sounds really cool. So let me just give you a quick example of that again. I'm going to start walking towards it. You can't hear it here. You start to hear it now. Now it's really loud. And now it's even louder now that we're actually in the water. And that's all coming from my little sound node which I have somewhere. There it is, the little sound node. And you can see we got this nice lovely... Uh, double sp spheres around it showing you know the fall off points and so on and I've also got the same thing for my fire that I've got outside and yeah so I'm going to be showing you how to uh, set some of this basic stuff up so I'm just going to quickly go over to my fire here and you can see I've got that sound cue uh, the ambient sound in here and once again we've got the two spheres one and two so I'm just going to quickly go out, go outside of the area quickly, press play, and just quickly demonstrate that. So, I'm going to get a little close. You should be able to hear it very slightly. Then when I get closer, it's really loud, some roaring flames, and just sound pretty darn badass. So, if you want to place a sound inside a UDK, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is just go ahead and uh, go to sound cues in here. However, there's more than one type of sound inside of UDK and not many people actually realize that. So if I just go over to uh, the filters and go to all types, we've got a few different types of sounds. The ones that we want to be worrying about for now is sound wave data and sound cues. So I'm just going to quickly select these so we can see both of them. So the difference between the sound node wave is that and uh, a sound cue is that a sound node sound node wave is essentially the raw sound which you'd import into UDK. I've actually got uh, a test sound which we're going to be using for this episode and then with a sound cue you have a sort of editor to go along with it so you can actually place instructions on top of your raw footage so for example if I quickly go ahead and right click this sound cue go to edit using sound cue editor you can see we've got a few uh, instructions that we're going to be going by so here's two pieces of here's two sounds you can see that it's being randomized it's then being modulated and then it's being attenuated so, you know, you can ha add these instructions just as if uh, you were playing around with the material editor where you'd have material expressions, instructions, what do you want, whatever you want to call them. Kismet where you're doing stuff is just one of the visual editors inside of UDK and we can do quite some cool stuff in here. So yeah, you don't actually get this editor with a sound wave node which is quite disappointing but, you know, that's what we've got a sound cue for which is pretty cool. So. Let's just go over some of these things so I can give you a good understanding of uh, just the basic setup here. Attenuation essentially controls the fall off and the positioning in 3D space with a um, uh, 
of, of a sound. So, for example, if we go ahead down here and scroll down to radius, minimum, maximum, this will be controlling those two spheres, the maximum being the outer sphere and the minimum being the inner sphere. The inner sphere being the area where you can hear the um, the sound the loudest and then outside of that while it reaches the second sphere it kind of gradually fades away and then we have that algorithm to choose how it's going to calculate that attenuation we've then got the modulator which is going to con uh, which is going to randomize the pitch and the volume uh, within a set threshold so the minimum being 0 0.95 here the maximum being 1.05 and the same for the pitch and then we've also got this random node which essentially goes between uh, the two the two sounds so if we actually go ahead and keep playing this it's going to be random each time and you can hear that it's playing randomly however if I just go ahead and play just the selected node this one which is highlighted in yellow it's going to be the same this is, this is essentially just the equivalent of just continuously playing a sound node wave because it's just raw footage with no control to it so let's just go ahead and uh, start to bring some sound, insi sound inside of UDK. So I'm looking for something which kind of has a loop to it, which I can uh, use for demonstration purposes. So there's a lot of character stuff in here. I really hate it, but uh, it's got to be in there. So it does kind of get in your way. So I'm going to look for something uh, relating to water because that's usually looped and we can dump it into this little pond lake thing that I have here. So let's see if I can find one quickly. Hello. This one sounds alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag that in. And as you can see, I now have. Oops. Ah, oh, god damn it. Sorry about that, I just wanted to stop that sound playing. So now I've brought this into the scene, you can see that I have one sphere and then another one which is huge. And that attenuation, the fall off here, is actually being controlled by the um the attenuation inside of the sound editor. So when you're playing around with that, that's how you kinda gotta gotta get it to work. So also you can drag in your sound node waves. However, the difference between this uh, these two here is that with sound node wave you can just go ahead and right click and go to the properties and just touch on some of the basic stuff here for example uh, modulation attenuation uh, some low pass filters and so on you can do some of this very basic stuff however with a sound cue you can do a lot more but you have to do that inside of the sound cue editor itself so I'm just gonna quickly show you how I can play around with some of these settings here uh, with the sound node wave and just as we have on the sound cue we have these two spheres so I'm going to play around with these quickly so I'm going to set this to 500 and I'm going to set this to 200 and as you can see those two spheres of mine have uh, come down a little bit in size and look about right so I'm going to stand outside of here going to press play and then we're going to start to walk inside of that area so you can see it kind of fades in as we get to the point which is about here. So the second sphere I feel is a little too big still but um, you know what can we do. Uh, actually no that's because I'm hearing it from here. So let's start playing around with some of the properties in our sound cue now. You can see that this is huge and yeah we need to play around with that and see what we can do. So I'm just going to go ahead open the sound cue editor up again and take a look at our setup. So the first thing we want to be playing around with is the attenuation. The area in which it is um, set up is way too high and we can't just simply play around with that in the properties of the sound node that we have there. So I'm going to set this to something like 500 which is reasonable and it's going to make it level with um, a previous piece and you can see that it hasn't necessarily updated here yet. So to update that just go ahead and Oops, accidentally deleted my terrain. Let's go ahead and delete the node and then drag it back in and you will now have the updated version of that. However, I still think it's a little too small now because it's only in sort of the center of the water. We want it to be going just around the edge a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can actually pull this off. So I'm going to set the minimum where we can hear it the loudest to say 600 so it's pretty much around the edge. And then I'm going to set the maximum to roughly 900 and hopefully 
this should just about get the effect that I'm looking for. And yeah, it looks and it looks and seems to be about right. It goes all the way around. And yeah, so let's go ahead and start off by um sorry, let's go ahead and try importing our own sound now, and then creating a basic setup for it. So let's just go ahead, and I'm just gonna go and import something. So just press import navigate to wherever you've got a sound uh keep in mind there's only a few formats you can actually use to import sounds inside of udk so you can use uh ogg wav files uh i'm not too sure about the rest oh i've got some pretty weird stuff in here that i probably shouldn't be uh, showing off but there we go i found it now so let's just go ahead and import this as test sound and boom, we now have our sound node testing, wave. Testing, and whenever one, two, I click three. that, you can hear it. Testing, 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 testing. And if I drag one, two, this in, three. you know, it's going to sound pretty, pretty badass, really. So let's go ahead and get into this. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing. And it just keeps on looping and looping and looping and so on. So now we need to start playing around with some of these settings and getting the sort of effect uh, that we're looking for. So what we can do now is just go ahead and create a new sound cue. So I'm just going to right click anywhere where we have space in the sound editor in the uh, content browser and press new sound cue. And I'm going to name this um, test sound. Yeah, there we go. Test sound cue. And we've got our basic, uh, you know, sound cue here. This is essentially what plays it and anything that comes out of here will be played so we can actually go ahead and put in a whole bunch of different nodes we can put in the sound node wave we can put in a whole bunch of other stuff but this is where I'm going to be ending off this tutorial in the next one I'm going to be going over what each and every single one of these nodes is I'm, go I'm going to be uh, bringing in our test sound into here so that we can actually you know put it in and uh, yeah, and we'll have our basic setup of our sound. We'll be able to create those atmospheric scenes that we're really looking for. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.